Yikes, that's no good. Is there another way I could possibly immerse myself into a community where I'm not constantly reminded how often my mother fornicates with underage strangers from the internet and my self-worth isn't constantly evaluated by 7th graders and still have the ability to yield exotic and interesting Russian long-range weaponry? There is? <laughs> this. So today we're looking at the OTS-03 SVU Airsoft Bullpup Sniper Rifle. This is a sniper rifle that is a replica of the Real Steel OTS-03 SVU, which is a Russian-designed sniper rifle that, for all intents and purposes, both in the Real Steel world and the Airsoft world, is a bullpup version of the SVD Dragonov. Um, this makes the rifle unique, obviously, both in design and function, and that's probably the most striking thing about it, is its unique design. Um, there's going to be a lot of things about this gun that are unique, both for the good and for the worse. <sighs> I wish I had friends. The gun is originally manufactured by Saima, but it's branded by ASP. This is something we see a lot in the airsoft industry for a multitude of reasons, whether it be licensing issues, simply uh, marketing, or for whatever other reason, we see that there are a lot of times different original manufacturers that use different brand names when the guns hit the shelves. But this gun, inside and out, is manufactured by Saima. As of filming this video, which is July 4th, 2018, this replica can be found on evic.com for $215 even, before taxes and shipping. As a quick disclaimer, I think that a majority of airsoft quote-unquote reviews on YouTube really just consist of unboxing and an overview of the features of the weapon. And while that's great and it's useful information for anyone looking to purchase the weapon, I don't think that it accurately depicts what the gun is going to be like for the owner or the long-term reliability. Before I review any airsoft gun, I try to put it to the test both in terms of reliability and functionality before breaking down what I think about the quality reliability and features of the gun. More or less 15,000 rounds have been fired through this gun, so this will hopefully depict a picture of what the long-term reliability and what the long-term experience is going to be with this gun. So a quick overview of the features of the gun from back to front. The gun comes with a full stock with a polymer shoulder rest. It comes with a removable metal dust cover that can be taken off by simply undoing a takedown lever, removing and reinstalling just like a classic AK dust cover. We see that it has a selector switch with both safe, semi, and full auto, which we'll talk about a little bit more later, but it is made out of metal. It has a metal imitation bolt that when slid back reveals the rotary style SVD Dragonov hop up. The magazine is housed in the back because it is a bullpup rifle. The magazine release and all of the available magazines for this gun are made out of metal as well. Moving on toward the handguard, the grip is made out of polymer but is very solid and I've never had any problems with it. The trigger and trigger guard are both standard in design and made out of metal. The gun also has another safety switch above the trigger which we'll talk about a little bit more later. And it also has an integrated metal fold down bipod. The handguard, which is made out of polymer, is also where the battery is housed. In order to install the battery, you simply have to undo a takedown lever toward the front, remove the placeholder for the handguard, and then the handguard splits into two, allowing you to install the battery. And then it is reinstalled by reassembling the handguard, pushing the placeholder back into place, 
and replacing the takedown lever into its original position. The gun is equipped with front and rear iron sights that are both made out of metal, which I wouldn't really recommend using. Uh, I think that this gun is, in most configurations, going to be best used with some sort of optic, which we'll talk a lot about a little bit later. The gun has a standard Russian style outer barrel that comes stock with a integrated S SVU style suppressor that's unique to this gun. And the gun comes shipped in most instances with an orange tip that is shrouded around the end of the suppressor. So going a little bit more in depth with some of the features of this gun, the overall construction quality is very high. The majority of these parts are high quality metal and the parts that are polymer are parts that are okay being polymer such as like a handguard or a pistol grip but all of the parts that make up the structure of the weapon are made entirely out of metal. Another thing that's really great about this gun is that in the 15,000 shots that I've gone through it and having taken in multiple games in differing conditions like extreme heat, indoor play, and rain, the gun has had high reliability. I haven't had to repair anything on the gun. It hasn't stopped firing for any reason. I haven't even had as much as a blown fuse. So I've used an 8.4 volt nickel metal hydrate battery, a 9.6 volt nickel metal hydrate battery, and a 7.4 volt lipo battery. And no matter what, compared to other weapons of con similar construction, the fire rate seems to be quite lethargic. I think this is due to the construction of the gearbox and the high out of box FP. Yes, it's not unacceptable and it's certainly usable if you're using it as a sniper or DMR platform, uh, but it does seem to suffer in terms of performance in that particular department. The FPS is around 430 to 440 and with chronoing every gun is going to come a little bit different i find that airsoft guns have a deviation of and something i've heard about many of these is that the safety position on the safety selector switch on the back of the gun actually doesn't work both semi and full auto are functional but in order to actually put the gun in safety you have to use the safety button which is located above the trigger there are two types of magazines available for this gun. There's the 150 round high capacity magazine, the one that comes stock with the gun, and then the 90 round mid capacity magazine. Magazine storage is awkward due to low capacity and proprietary design, but can be circumvented by buying real steel SVD pouches, albeit an expensive option. Another thing that I found unusual about the gun is that there's no included scope mount, despite the fact that the iron sights and the weapon style basically lends itself to requiring a scope to be used effectively there's a side scope mount that allows you to put an aftermarket scope mount on it but it doesn't actually include that i bought the matrix 20 dollars scope mount off of evic.com and it works great the problem is the fact that this wasn't included with the gun and that in order for me to use it with an optic i have to buy this 20 dollars accessory Another benefit is that the cool factor is very high. I brought this gun to multiple fields with multiple groups of people and I never failed to get a compliment or comment on how unique the gun is. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that while the full auto feature is useful, it may make it awkward for some Milsim rule sets as this most of the time is going to be classified as a DMR and most DMRs aren't allowed to be in full auto, just something to consider, neither really a benefit or a drawback. The sling situation is a little bit unusual. They included a front sling mount, but not a rear sling sling mount. So if you want to adapt a two-point sling to the weapon, you have to do some aftermarket modifications. And obviously stock, the weapon wouldn't be able to have a one-point sling operation due to the fact that the sling mount that is included is in the front. In summation, despite the gun's really solid construction and high reliability, bullpup design, uniqueness, and cool factor, there is a laundry list of things that make the gun either awkward to use or just straight up flaws of the gun. 
This doesn't make it a bad gun, but it certainly showcases why most people stick to either an M4 or an AK platform for their primary airsoft gun, because these designs have been perfected and there's many aftermarket modifications and upgrades that can be done to them. However, this gun is very cool, and if you're looking for something exotic and unique and don't, don't mind some of the pitfalls or are willing to do the work to circumvent them, and don't mind the slightly lower out-of-the-box performance to, compared to other guns of its class, this is certainly a unique and cool airsoft gun to pick up.